Tenemos a una, una invitada, ¿verdad? Sí. Hoy en la mañana, Seda, que el que no la conoce la va a conocer ahora. Adelante. Eh, vamos a estar hablando esta mañana con Carla Christopher. Ella es autora, eh, presentadores, presentadora sobre varios temas, eh, contra el racismo, eh, activista en la comunidad y también es, es poeta. Está afiliada a una iglesia en, en New York. Vamos uh -huh. a hablar un poco de eso sobre también. La, sobre la, y la labor que ella sí. realizó. Y, um, yeah, y sus comienzos. Good morning, Carla. How are you? Good morning. I am wonderful. I'm so excited to be here. Great. Uh, we're excited to have to have you. Carla, we, you're from York, but let's go back a bit. You know, where were you born and where did you grow up? So my father is from uh, Texas, right on the border between Texas and Mexico. And um, my mom is from coal country down in West Virginia. And uh, the two of them met in Metro DC. And it's one of my favorite stories because my mom was running an art gallery there. Uh -huh. And my father was a jazz musician who played at one of the art openings. Um, but both of them were also professors during the day. And that uh, I think is a big part of what I later ended up doing as an artist and an activist because both of my parents had such passion for art, for the written word, um, but they also really cared about what could this mean for the community. And um, so both of them taught law and taught business and mm -hmm. did a lot of community service, you know, and, and they were active during the 70s during this incredible time of of activism and you know ending segregation and my father is black and hispanic and my mom is white and so they were both really involved in different freedom movements so i think i i carry a lot of both of them in me sounds like great great parents people wow. often forget that we know now but in the the 60s and 70s there were white people that supported the movement for civil rights of african americans and and, and others you know and um pe people even now are marvelous oh they're white people there it's not there's not all it's not all black oh they see All these black people, well, yeah, but there's uh, <laughs> other races mixed up in in that group, you know. <laughs> but you true. you seem blind to to that, you know. So when well, did you make it to York? So I was living in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and um, about 15 years ago, I was loving the underground art scene mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Um, there were a lot of people who were pushed out of the more expensive housing market and the gentrification happening in D.C. A lot like we're seeing people now living in York and Lancaster yeah. because mm -hmm. they are, are priced out of mm -hmm. Philadelphia and now they're getting priced out of Lancaster, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a complicated conversation that you want to be close to the art, you want to be close to the resources, but you also have to find affordable housing. And um, my niece went into foster care. Okay. And she has special needs, and she was here in York. And so while I was living in Baltimore, I was living a, a nightclub lifestyle, right? Because <laughs> I was a performance poet and um, also performed with a band. And uh, as we were singing and, and spending those weekends together, having a great time, Um, I realized that family was struggling mm. and there was not anyone who had the ability to care for a teenage girl with special needs. And so over the course of a weekend, I picked up everything I owned, found an apartment on Craigslist and moved to York, Pennsylvania so that I could become a therapeutic foster parent. 
And when I moved here, I thought there's not any kind of art scene. There's not anything that I'm going to want to do here. Um, I'm just going to focus on family and, and learning how to be a mother um, because that was brand new to me. But once I got to central Pennsylvania, I was astonished at how much talent is here. Yes. And the spirit of collaboration that because there's only so many artists and creative people in this region, we all know each other and we work together and we do events together and we write music or poetry together. And um, I just fell in love with this scene. So, you know, I also thought that children moved away from home when they are 18. It turns out that is not. So I ended up not only having uh, my niece live with me off and on for the next uh, 10 years, but also uh, her two sons that also were, I, I cut the cord when uh, they were born in the hospital and absolutely cherish my time with them. And so she came and stayed with me after each of them were born. And so now I, I am tied to this land and this community. I've traveled and performed and taught students, <clears throat> gotten involved in the school districts because of having a child and caring about the education system, caring about the legal system. It really pulled me into arts-based activism here. So I've spent time in Lancaster, in York, in Harrisburg, um, in Gettysburg, in Hanover, doing um, work with school districts, teaching students about their history and their culture by using the art. One of the things that has been really difficult for me is because we did move around so much, because we did move up um, to the north when I was young, I never learned how to speak Spanish. I never got close to a lot of the black members of my family down in Texas who still had memory of being enslaved. And there were mm -hmm. still the descendants of slaves who were there. And um, I never got the chance to learn that history. And I saw that a lot of the young people in central Pennsylvania were having that same struggle. So I developed a class called I Too Am America, inspired by the Langston Hughes poem that, um, you know, where he speaks about American history being the history of immigrants, of black people, of brown skinned people. And um, so I would get experts and friends mm -hmm from organizations who were doing different cultural work. And we went into elementary schools and we started teaching these kids about languages and holidays. And, you know, we hosted three Kings Day celebrations for them and taught them how to salsa and merengue. And we <laughs> taught them about um, spirituals and, and cooking um, and partners from different restaurants and dance studios and art galleries all came in and helped me and so we're actually giving these kids their culture back and um, you know it, seeing that happen for a younger generation was amazing and that's that's why I'm still here in central Pennsylvania I feel like there's a need for artists for activists we can make a difference here in a way that we can't in big cities there, we're not as needed there, but we are needed here. Eh, Wilfredo, eh, sabemos que debemos todos enfocarnos en lo positivo, pero nosotros hemos escuchado por años de que las ciudades donde, donde vivimos, York, Lancaster, son ciudades que todavía persiste el racismo. ¿Cómo se siente ella eh, viviendo en la ciudad de York, Pensilvania? ¿Ha sentido ese racismo dentro mm -hmm. de la ciudad de Lancaster o en los lugares donde ella se presenta? Yeah, Hector asks basically racism has existed here still exists what approach do you take to racism whether it's york or wherever you may be sure um right now i'm in a very unique position mm -hmm. that i work out of two different places one in harrisburg and one in lancaster so those are very different cultures right And in Lancaster, what I have experienced is such a divide between the city and the county. 
And when I'm out in the county, there are genuinely people who say they've never met someone with <laughs> non-white skin before. They've never had a close friend. Um, they've never had a close work partner. And they've never been to a different church. Um, they've never been to a different uh cultural venue they've never been out dancing to spanish music or hip-hop and r&b so there's a lot of racism that comes from habit and that comes from ignorance mm -hmm. so i do a lot of education and and i use the arts right because that's something that folks can recognize yes. and i talk about music and and we use dance and food and clothing and then i explain using personal stories and that's where the poetry comes in a lot because it talks about the emotions how things feel not just a lot of statistics um, that people don't trust and don't feel safe listening to um, because they they just know that statistics have been so manipulated and and that a lot of the media is is very biased so they're excited to hear people's stories they they trust listening to someone say this is what happened to me so i do a lot of what you are doing here lifting up the voices of individuals who are struggling and you know even as i've been out here working right i've gone into the gas station to just get gas and um and had people say incredibly insulting things to me <laughs> or push me out of the way and and make me feel unsafe um I had people come out and chase me off their land because I was trying to film a poem. I was recording a wow. poem and I stopped at a beautiful cornfield and I set my, my little tripod up and I was just going to recite a poem for my YouTube channel. And I had some farmers come out of the farmhouse and yell at me to get off their land wow. and tell me to keep <laughs> moving along. right? Wow. But I've also had wonderful experiences yes. of allies saying, I want to stand with you. I want to work with you. I'm excited about this class that you just taught or this workshop. When you read poems about um, events I didn't know about, it, it really moved me. And I feel inspired to make change. So, you know, that is... That's a huge thing for me, just to be able to continue to educate and use storytelling to change people's hearts and, and affect their emotions. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's, there's some things that are blatant. There's some things that are subtle. And what happened to me with my granddaughter was her counselor emails me and says, oh, you must be from a wealthy, well-to-do family in, in Puerto Rico. I go, no, I come from a humble, <laughs> working class, uh, people who value our culture and value education. And, and, and value our role in, in, in this society. But the lady is very nice, but she didn't capture what she was saying. She must have thought, well, I must speak English well, mm -hmm. so he can't be like, like all those other ones, you know. And my grand, I told my granddaughter that, and, and you know, originally she told my uh, my granddaughter, and my granddaughter told me, and, and she she was confused. <laughs> Let's see. Let, let, let Hector and I do a brief a recap. Um, Muy interesante esta conversación con Carla Christopher, señoras y señores. Ya llegó aquí de Baltimore, ¿verdad? En la ciudad de Baltimore. Llegó aquí al área de York, Pensilvania. Ella es una poeta. Vive aquí en nuestra área y, y nos ha hablado sobre la forma en que ha sido recibida en esta área. Nos ha hablado en, en las ocasiones eh, que ha estado en algunos lugares y se ha sentido amenazada por personas eh, que quizás no la acepten como una persona de la, de la raza afroamericana, pero es una combinación de afroamericana, americana y puertorriqueña. Y, 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 y blanca americana. Blanca americana, exacto. Ella vino para York uh -huh. viviendo en Baltimore, en Baltimore sí. porque tenía 
eh, creo, una sobrina, uh -huh. si no estoy equivocado, uh -huh. sí. que estaba... En un lugar sustituto. Sí, sustituto, sí. sí. Y entonces ella decidió, como a veces hacemos todos nosotros uh -huh. tenemos que tomar decisiones y echamos uh -huh. para adelante, ¿sabes? Y ella pudo hacer eso y um, se dedica a la comunidad en varias eh, formas, charlas, a, hablando de activismo, hablando de... Justicia social, sí, sobre sí. todo. Yeah. Yeah. Es una, 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 una gran activista, sería interesante ver una charla de, de, esta, yeah. de esta señora, Carla. Yeah. Uh, Carla, how, how was you know this past year i mean for all of us it was uh like i told my granddaughter it's something none of us have ever gone through so there, there there's, no, there's no book you know so so how did uh, you spend the last year oh my goodness the first few months were despair right the first couple of weeks i actually enjoyed myself it was great to slow down um and that's something i've noticed with a lot of especially my black and hispanic friends right we have been doing so much we're trying to educate we're trying to do activism we're working multiple jobs we're traveling we're involved in different families and, we're cooking and community <laughs> cleaning the house right we're cooking <laughs> right like it's just the pace that we were living at before this pandemic it wasn't healthy It was not, yeah. it wasn't safe for us. It was contributing to poor health. Um, it was contributing to mental health challenges. So it felt really good to slow down. But then as an artist, festivals were canceled. Shows were canceled. Retreats mm -hmm. were canceled. And as gig after gig was canceled, I was really struggling, not just worried financially, but also Where was my outlet? Where was my ability to connect with people? And how was I going to be helping educate, right? The bulk of my work is done as a storyteller. That's how I change hearts. That's how I do arts-based activism. I need people and generally large spaces, right? Festivals and outdoor right. gatherings, church services, um, large classes. I go to universities and high schools and I teach classes or do presentations and workshops. Um, I always have to have a lot of different formats because it's tough for an artist to pay the bills as an artist, but I needed to have those large groups of people and now all of them were gone. And I was feeling so frustrated, so lost, really, really, really struggling. And then I said, okay, if there's anybody who has the skill that's needed to reinvent themselves right now. It's a creative person, mm -hmm. right? This is what we do. So I became a blogger. I started working with a lot of different agencies and publishing houses, um, places that put out regular blogs. And I wrote about racial justice. I wrote about cultural competency. Um, I started creating some artistic pieces Um, responding to the different justice crises happening. Um, but honestly, it was so distressing to me. Um, the death of George Floyd, the issues and clashes with police and protesters, even here in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing a lot of speaking at marches and Black Lives Matter demonstrations, the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting, sure. uh, which, of course, you know, so deeply affected both black and Hispanic communities and really showcased how we, we all have to be in this together because the same people are coming for both of us. Um, that was a lot of um, emotional work for me. And so I started writing about that and speaking about that at every place that would have me. And it gave me a real sense of purpose. So doing that writing, um, creating YouTubes and, and starting a YouTube channel, um, becoming a lot more active. I started an Instagram, you know, and got involved with <laughs> connecting with people on Instagram. And I started meeting folks, right? Other people were also feeling disconnected and would reach out to me. And now that we're back in person, I've started meeting some of the friends I made on Instagram or from my YouTube videos. 
but I, I also was doing trainings over Facebook, you know, oh. learning how to do events on Facebook and, um, and Zoom. I have never spent more hours on the computer, <laughs> but <laughs> I am grateful for Zoom because I've been teaching racial justice workshops. I've been teaching writing workshops. I've been hosting retreats. Um, so in a lot of ways, I've become more administrative, less of the performer and, uh, you know, the person out in the streets with the band and more about thoughtful educating and teaching other people how to do this work. Lord. And that transition to teacher has been incredibly rewarding. I, I, I wouldn't go back. I'm grateful. Okay. Carla, any, any presentation uh, coming up? in person that we can go all and meet you. Love it. Yes. Do you have any, any presentation cool. coming up? Um, so we're just beginning to phase back to okay. uh, in in person mm -hmm. stuff, but um, my website is carlachristopher.com. Okay. Very easy to remember. Yes. And so as, as August comes around, mm -hmm. I'm starting to add in person presentations in August. So please come. Uh, and check out my website at carlachristopher.com. And uh, there's poetry there to read, as well as lots of different videos and uh, ways to connect with me. I love meeting Great. people and, and hearing their stories. So mm -hmm. it'd be exciting. Carla, uh, talking about poetry, how about you doing uh, a reading of uh, one of your poems? Love it. And. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pull in my sweetheart here, Joseph Castaneda Carrera, and uh, because then we can be bilingual for you. Okay. This piece is uh, is actually the piece that I wrote the night of the Pulse shootings, mm. and it was you know obviously a nightclub in Florida, and it was mostly um, black and Hispanic yes. individuals, and a white supremacist came into this nightclub. And it just, the loss of life was something that I had to, to write about. And, and York gathered, and uh, we had five or six hundred people came together in York for a memorial. And, and I read this piece, and then just a couple of weeks ago, it was the five-year anniversary. Right. And I read it again and, and realized, gosh, that I wish more had changed in those five years but we're still fighting for our lives and we're also still honoring the beauty of of these people that you know not just the ones from five years ago but the ones that we're still losing and we're grateful for their lives and and for their witness so Mass i'm thankful walked into pulse nightclub in orlando florida and killed 49 individuals mostly black and hispanic humans mostly members of the lgbtqia plus community and even though we are far away the people of york responded and said, we will stand in solidarity with those who are suffering and those who are marginalized and who are victims of hate crimes. And so almost 600 people gathered in Cherry Lane Park and we remembered their names. We read poems, we sang songs, we offered prayers, and we created beautiful art cards that we sent in a book to the Pulse Memorial that's now a part of the Pulse Museum down in Florida. I want to share with you the poem that I read that night so that we can remember again together. Sure. The way that York unites when there are those in need. You have learned the map of connected constellations. You have flown among swirls of cosmic dust and sparkling atoms. You have crossed through cosmic gates and unlocked the secrets of pyramid. You are warming yourself by the heat of sun-like stars, and you will shine for a thousand years. You, of your angel self, have returned to the skies from which you were made, and you left me without the sachet of your salsa, without the clapping beat of your footsteps on the dance floor, without the playful flash of your smile, but I would not hold you here, even if I could. You are dancing in the dream time, and this This will be my only reply when the empty space you left behind calls your name to make music more intensely, more beautifully, 
more devotedly than ever before, to write poems more rich and more vibrant, to sing loudly and without apology, to speak freely, to kiss everyone I love on both cheeks, and then to kiss them again, to live as bravely as you danced on that last night at Pulse, a nightclub named for your heartbeat. Mm. To love <laughs> as if I too were made out of stars. Han aprendido el mapa de constelaciones conectadas, han volado entre romolinos de polvo cósmico y chispas atónomos. Han cruzado a través de puertas cósmicas y dominado los secretos de los pirámides. Sí mismos son un calentamiento por el calor del sol y las estrellas si usted brillara por miles de años. Usted y su mismo ángel han regresado a los cielos desde que se hicieron y me dejaste sin el deslice de la salsa, sin el ritmo de los aplausos de sus pasos en la pista de baile, sin el río juguetón de su sonrisa. Pero no te retendría aquí, aunque así pudiera. Está bailando en tu tiempo de soñar en este momento. Está, será mi única respuesta cuando el espacio vacío que dejaste llame tu nombre. Para hacer música más intensa, más bonita, con más dedicación que nunca antes. Para escribir poesías más ricas y más vibrantes. Para cantar fuerte y sin disculpas. Para hablar libremente. Para besar a todo el mundo que yo amo en las dos mejillas. Y luego a besarlos otra vez. Para amar con valentía, valentía, como cuando bailabas en esa última noche en pulso. Un club nocturno, llamado así por tus latidos del corazón. Para amar con si fuera yo hecho de las estrellas. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Gracias. It, we have to unfortunately cut the the our, our interview, but again, Carla, could you give us uh, your uh, website? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Please come and see me at carlachristopher.com, on Instagram at rev.carlachristopher, or on Facebook also at Rev Carla Christopher. I'd love to connect. Well, Carla, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you this morning. And listening to you, um, your background, and some of your work. And I look forward that at some point in the future we could meet you uh, in person and uh, be able uh, to let you know that you have uh, uh, a friend or friends here in, in Lancaster. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you both. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing day. Thank you again. You as well. Thank, Thank you, you, Carla. Same to you. Thanks. Bonito, señoras y señores. Participación de Carla Christopher de York, Pennsylvania. Otra artista que tenemos la oportunidad de conocer a través de este programa de... Mujer interesante, ¿verdad? Súper interesante. Me gustaría ver una de, de sus presentaciones. Definitivamente eh, estaré mirando alguno de sus, de sus trabajos en en internet en, en estos días pero me parece una persona muy interesante para, para ir y, y, y estar ser parte de una de sus presentaciones súper sí. interesante esa es una de las razones por las cuales estamos haciendo eh, estas entrevistas para eh, dejarle saber a las uh -huh. personas si quieren salir de sus rutinas porque hay alguna gente que está bien cómodo en sus rutinas sí, hay otras personas que le gusta conocer más uh -huh. Okay. Y aquí le estamos trayendo personas eh, inteligentes. Súper inteligentes. Okay. Súper inteligentes, señora. Me gustaría definitivamente ver una, una de sus, estar en una de sus presentaciones, eh, escuchándola leer estos, estos poemas tan, tan, tan bonitos y, y tan inspiradores como los que pudimos escuchar uno de ellos aquí en la mañana de hoy. Creo que es. Sí, en, en español y en inglés. En inglés, yes. okay. Sí. Carla Christopher, bien fácil ahí pueden obtener eh, más información, ver alguno de sus trabajos 
y alguna de sus presentaciones y definitivamente si tenemos la oportunidad de informarles sobre alguna de sus presentaciones que esté haciendo por acá en vivo les vamos a dar saber y, y vamos a ir todos a, a presenciar este, la participación de Carla Christopher excelente historia la de ella también a nivel personal por eso está, estamos trayendo no solamente personas que tienen talento pero que tienen la habilidad de conectar con otras personas por su poesía, por sus palabras y por los talleres que, que, que ella ofrece una excelente activista y está en nuestra área esperamos que en usted, York, en New York y trabaja en, en el área de Lancaster también hace presentaciones en todas partes así que vamos a estar muy pendientes a sus presentaciones nos vamos Wilfredo, muchísimas gracias por traer en la mañana de hoy aquí a Café con Leche y en lo que es este programa que auspicia el Pennsylvania Concern de Art 